morning, church. Morning. How are you all? Good. Great. I like it when there's an answer when you speak and you get an answer back. This is great. Well, I welcome you here this morning on this day, this morning in February, where we come together to worship the Lord. But also we are remembering that as Americans, I think mostly Americans, we are celebrating Valentine's Day. And I love seeing all the red in the room. Not only does it remind us that we have a holiday, but it reminds us that the blood of Jesus covers everything. So as we begin, I'm going to read. I had a psalm all planned out, and the Lord said, nope, you've got to read something else. So welcome, you who are online. 1 Corinthians 13 says, If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have faith that can move mountains, whew, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardships that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not seek dishonoring others and it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered and it keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but it rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Well, I missed you all last week, and I love you. I love our church family, and I love being able to be here with you. I love you, April. It's so good to see you. <laughs> so, as we begin to worship the Lord, please um, bow your heads with me. And God, we want to just thank you and praise you for this day. We thank you for creation and all that you have made. And we thank you that you have chosen to join our paths together in love. Love for one another and love for you. So as we stand and give you our time, and our worship and our praise this morning. Accept it, O oh Lord, with the love that we give to you because you first loved us. We pray in Jesus' holy name, and all who agreed said, Amen. 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 So please stand and worship if you're able. Was it just me, or when she was reading the scripture, I felt like saying, and we're gathered here together in the sight of God and all these people to join this man and this woman. But you know what? God's scripture is available to us each and every day. It doesn't require a marriage ceremony, but a covenant between us and our God. This love that never fails, that never gives up, that is always after us. Hallelujah. Thank you, God.
of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God. And, and this promise that we sing, God, that you work all things for our good, Lord, is because we love you. <laughs> you work all things to the good for those that love you and are called according to your purposes, oh God. And so this morning, God, we trust in your promises. We love you. We are called, oh God, and we are resting in the promises that you give us today, God, this love that never fails. Thank you, God. Thank you for your grace, Lord. Thank you for your grace.
that we're doing it again, and uh, this is a youth and parents kind of thing. Um, you can talk more about it with Julie tonight, but it is, or this afternoon, after before you leave, if you want to find out more, if you've not made a reservation, we need to know how many people. Um, so that's 6.30 to 8 tonight, right back here, Valentine's Day little fellowship. Bring your thinking cap. <laughs> Bring your thinking caps. The last one was not easy. It's got to be harder. Okay, so this is good. I'm glad we have an hour and a half not to get stuck in the building and be able to go home at 8 o'clock. Yes, that's the goal, isn't it? Because I'm sure Timmy's not going to let us out until we get it done. Yeah, that's all that goes. Um, also, our uh, discovery class, um, if you are new to Sanctuary, we have a discovery class. It's going to be next Sunday. Pastor Donna is going to be teaching that for the next three weeks. Um, right here. So if you're watching online, welcome once again. Um, you would be welcome to come here. Um, if you're still not comfortable coming here, we will run another one um, as a, a, a virtual or online class after this one concludes, probably in the beginning of April. Um, so this is what we ask everybody to do um, to move into uh, becoming part of the family here. So you learn more about the vision and mission of Sanctuary. You kind of learn uh, what we believe, how we uh, construct everything, and then that enables us to get to know you a little bit better and invite you into participating in some of the ministries here. And so this is what we do kind of as a transition from being uh, just a, a visitor to being a part of calling this uh, your family. And so we invite anybody that wants to go through that uh, to see Pastor Donna before you head out today or just send an email um, if you don't want to hang around. I know we're not supposed to fellowship be too long after church according to the state protocols. So we don't want to do too much of that, but we want to make sure that you communicate if you need to, okay? <laughs> Um, so before I launch into the word and before we just, oh, we don't dismiss the kids. Look, I remembered it as for nothing. <laughs> Green does have little um, uh, fun stuff for the kids to do if they need it, right? Um, but we're going to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. And I thank you so much. We had a special guest last week, um, a missionary, Terry Mugabe. Um, he shared an incredible story, um, and, and some of you were not able to hear it. And um, our technology was not working so good last week. And so his, um, his um, testimony was kind of blotted out by the fan on our projector. So I asked him to send me another one. So look for that. I will post it again on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube so you can hear from him. It's an amazing story how God just brought him from uh, a place of destitution, of uh, uh, a refugee camp for 20 years to the United States, to North Point, to serving God. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome story. So Terry was so gracious to um, provide another video for me. So look for that. Um, but that's part of what we do here. This is part of our giving. Our tithes and our offerings. Our tithes are those things that God says, you know what, I'm asking you for 10%. And we had a Bible study on Saturday, and Joan said it's so great. We get to keep 90%. Mm -hmm. He only asked for 10. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So we're able to re return that 10%, which is really our God's. And then it's God inspires us to give towards missions, people like Terry, people like all those people over there, and people like the Bovers who are going to be starting the worship room. And as a church, we're going to be supporting them on a monthly basis to enable what God has called them to do. This is what we do. Mm -hmm. We release the gifts. Amen. 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 And so as you give, I just encourage you to, if God is inspiring, and a spirit of generosity. Knowing that everything that you give here goes right into ministry. And so we thank God for that. So let's just pray. God, we thank you, O oh Lord, that you give us the opportunity to give. And God, you are so generous in every way. God, we wake up each morning and we lift our eyes to see the sun and the trees and even the snow. And right here, God, I am aware of this beautiful lake and this 
functioning, beautiful space. <laughs> God, you make a way where there seems to be no way. And God, in response, and in a love for you that knows no end, we give generously. And we thank you, Lord. Bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, if you choose to participate in this morning's offering, you can do it online um, by uh, going to our website. We also have a QR code. If you are a guest here today or if you've been a guest a couple times and you're trying to decide if this is something you want to do, become a part of this family here, we ask you to just kind of zoom in on this and connect with us. It'll bring you to our website, our giving, and also our digital connection card so that we can find out more about you and uh, get to know you and uh, pray for you. Um, so that's a way to connect with us. We also have the old school basket over there. Or you can text it to 396-9225, the word give. Lots of ways in order for you to participate. And hey, everybody online, I want to welcome you again. Just so grateful that we have this community online. And I don't know if anybody follows uh, the comments on uh, Sunday mornings, but this is definitely a little community. Uh, something that the leadership team and I are going to talk about, I'm giving you a heads up leadership team, is to talk about an online pastor. I think we need an online minister. Somebody that is called to minister to you all. So let's pray about that, right? Uh, just be in prayer that God would lead that person that would want to pastor those people. Because you're not here. And as we engage online, I think somebody needs to be doing that. Just something I've been thinking about. Karina is this morning. Karina is this morning. Thank you for that. <laughs> And I know Miss Sarah Glynn does too when she's able to in Florida. We have people that join us from all over. We have this lovely woman, Debbie Clark. I've gotten to know her just online. She said good morning and happy birthday. Hey, good morning. She's all over. She's watching in Ohio. Um, so God is, you know what? It's awesome. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We're just so grateful to have you. All right, kids, if you need your stuff, have it all been handed out already? Already handed out. Oh, so we're good. Are there any extras? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm just going to move into sharing the word this morning, and um, oftentimes uh, I try to balance um, expository, what does that mean? It means I look right at scripture, and we're going to talk about that, and that's the basis for our sermons. I mean, scripture is always the basis, but sometimes it's topical, right? We talk about, um, you know, we talk about the three E's. We talk about, you know, Christmas and Advent and all those things, but sometimes I try to balance those out um, with just kind of hunkering down in a book or a letter, an epistle. <laughs> and so for the next few weeks, we're going to be just hunkering down with the book of Philippians. And uh, Philippians is really kind of incredible. If you could give me the, um, the man. No, uh, no, the city. This is actually, um, and you all online, I'm sorry about this. If you want to Google, you can Google uh, the city of Philippi and the ruins. But what I'm showing these guys here is this picture of what used to be Philippi. And uh, you can see it was massive, right? It was a massive, massive place. The city was founded in 386 BC by Philip, who's the father of Alexander the Great. So it's got a lot of kind of solid history to it. It bears the name of Philip. And basically there's a range of hills um, which divides Europe from Asia east from west, and just at Philippi, the chain of hills kind of dips into a pass so that the city commanded the road from uh, Europe to Asia. And since the, since the road must go through the pass, and this was the reason that one of the great battles of history, actually, going forward, was fought at Philippi. It was here that Antony defeated Brutus and Cassius and thereby decided the future of the Roman Empire. So Philippi has this solid kind of history behind it. And in the book of Acts, we also find out that Paul was visited in a dream by a man of Macedonia. So basically, Paul had, he's on these missionary journeys that he was um, uh, likened to do, right? Going around the... Uh, the, the age at that time, and um, instead of going where he was supposed to go, in the middle of the night, he has this dream, and in the dream, there's a man going, come over here, and that changed everything about how Paul eventually did ministry, so he goes over there and founds the church in Philippi, so not only was it 
uh, strategic as far as human governmental stuff and um, uh, trade and um, diplomacy and all of those things. It was strategic in a spiritual way as well. So from its earliest beginnings is a riverbank Bible study, right? It, we find out as, as Paul goes in on these missionary journeys, journeys, oftentimes he starts at the synagogue, but this time he's over at the river, and at the riverbank there's Lydia, and a bunch of um, uh, praying women basically having a Bible study on the riverbank, and Paul addresses them, and that is the birthplace of the church at Philippi. So we begin with Paul's letter this morning to this faithful gathering of Christ followers. Letters have a life of their own, right? This is a, a letter that was written from Paul as he's in uh, jail or um, in chains, basically under house arrest, most likely in Rome. And uh, so letters, this, this letter, they tend to have a life of their own. More than any, any other form of written communication, letters are personalized written to the eyes of their recipients. So now, can you show me the little woman? This is Ramirez's painting, Woman Reading a Letter. <laughs> Pretty explanatory uh, title, but I, I just kind of want you to look at it for a moment. The beauty of a letter is that it's personal. Um, if you look at this woman, you can tell that there's uh, a tenderness, the way that she's looking at this, she's taking the time. And I want you to see what's behind her. And what's hard in this space here is that you can't see so much. But the, the image behind her is a map. And so I think, you know, if I, if I were thinking about Paul and this woman, this woman is probably following the travels of a loved one and reading a letter that she received when they were on the road. And in the same way, Paul had traveled away from Philippi, was endeared and loved the people there and sent this letter back to encourage them. Some of Paul's letters were to correct some weird stuff that was going on in the churches. This is not one of those. This is one where he just wants to celebrate what God is doing in and through them and share the love that he has for them. So once letters are delivered and read, their mission is normally accomplished. But some live on, and that's what we begin with today, right? This letter that has survived miraculously over 2,000 years. God, we thank you, O oh Lord, for your providence, your foresight, God, in allowing those uh, early believers to collect these precious documents so that we could have a window in to see how you were moving, how Paul ministered, and God, what we can learn and glean from this letter even today. So God, we thank you for it. We rejoice in it. God, help us, fill us, renew us through these words. In Jesus' name, amen. So like I said, we're beginning with Philippians. So if you want to open your Bibles or your uh, open up your Bible apps, you can read along with me because we're going to read the whole, just about the whole chapter one today. And it begins this way, <clears throat> Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons. I love how this letter begins. If anything is going to set the tone of anything, it's how, I mean, oftentimes we're like, dear so-and-so. But look at the way he begins this. He's addressing them as saints, fellow believers, but the best part is how he refers to himself and Timothy. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, right? You can tell a great deal about a person by how they refer to themselves. And here Paul refers to himself in Timothy as servants. And that's my translation of the one that I'm reading today. But basically the Greek word is doulos, right? Which means more like a slave. The tone of the letter is that they are slaves to Christ. Sheer humility. And he goes on to say, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. So as soon as he met this, this group of Bible believers, these people that are praying and seeking after God but had not heard the truth of Jesus Christ. As soon as he had begun this work in Philippi, they had partnered with him in an incredible way. 
And we hear how their faith took action, right? It was expressed in generosity. In other scriptures, we understand that they sent an offering, right? They sent an offering to other believers, and they sent an offering through Epaphroditus to Paul. So even as Paul is writing from prison, they are expressing this generosity. How it must have encouraged him to receive this financial gift through their, their brother, and again, I want to encourage you, as we think about our missions giving, do you know how much that encourages a missionary? When we say yes, you know, when, when he was here, just to talk about Terry last week, when people came up and said, I want to give you an extra offering just for you, how much do you think that that encourages them and, and strengthens them to continue to go forward? Because you know what? There are those times where they go and they share and nothing is given. Nothing. And so they continue to do what God has called them to do, and yet we know that there's an encouragement that comes. So thank you. Thank you for your faith in action, through giving towards missions or uh, offerings and all of those things, right? Faith in action through generosity. May it be so with us here at Sanctuary. When missionaries send their thank yous to us, it is in many ways like this letter, right? The missionaries, you don't always get to see them. They come in our P.O. box. And they'll send, thank you so much. Thank you for partnering with us. And then on a monthly basis, we get communications from them. This is what God is doing because you are partnering with us. And so in the same way, Epaphroditus brings this mission, this missionary offering, right? from the church in Philippi to Paul. In verse 6 it says, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Christ, Jesus Christ. Sorry, different translations. <laughs> it is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. Wow. That's crazy, right? We know that Jesus Christ sacrificed himself in love. And Paul right now is saying how I yearn for you with the affection of Christ Jesus, the sacrificial love because he adores himself. And he goes on to say, and it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. He's talking about this love may abound more and more and more. Now, we're, we have to be on Valentine's Day, right? Sometimes love seems like chocolate and greeting cards. Fat babies flying around with arrows. But love, right, is so much more than this. Love abounding with knowledge. In reality, it's because of this knowledge of God that they love so much. It's not just a head knowledge, but an intimacy, a depth of knowledge, a depth of relationship. And out of that springs a love that transcends time and place. A love that we read about today, 2,000 years later, because of how it was expressed, because of this deep knowledge and relationship that they had with their God. Now, can you bring up the picture of Paul? This is Rembrandt. Has anybody ever seen this vision of this is St. Paul, according to Rembrandt? I just kind of love this little picture here. Look at him. He's got his Bible. He's got his pen in hand. He's just kind of, you know, look at his foot. His, yes, his foot's just hanging out. Looks like he has a bunion. He's just... Hey, <laughs> and there's something that you can't see very well that I'm going to point out in just a minute. But so here he is with the sun coming in, doing what he's called to do, to advance the gospel no matter what. And he goes on to say this, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me, this, <laughs> has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is actually for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak what the word without fear. We are no longer slaves to fear. Hey, look, oh, way over here. I'm going to walk over here, guys. 
Sorry, camera. Right here, you can barely see it. Do you see what he's got with him? No, probably not. It's a sword. So if you look at this, if you Google Rembrandt and St. Paul at prison, you'll see that right here he's got this massive sword. So you all online, Paul's got a sword next to him on the couch. Because he's saying that he was speaking the word, and this is the thing that I want to focus on. Some indeed preach Christ, he says, from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? <laughs> Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Okay, let's be honest. <clears throat> do we love all the preachers that we know about out there? <coughs> Right? I mean, I think we we're all going to sit here and say, there's parts that we've listened to people and we've heard what they say, right? Have you ever said something like this uh, about a well-known preacher? Uh, he waters down the gospel. Um, that's word of faith. That's not biblical. That chick, she's in it for the money. So is this what we're called to do? <laughs> so what does Paul say? Whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And what? He goes on to say, and in that, I rejoice. So if, when I read something like this, I understand that we all have that, right? We all have this understanding of whether or not we think somebody is actually, you know, preaching the gospel the way that we think the gospel should be preached. <laughs> but the reality is, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is being proclaimed, right? And, and for that, we should be rejoicing, right? We, let's keep our eyes on our own walk, right? Are we proclaiming Christ in our own lives? And on the other side of that, let's give ourselves some grace. We, not, we might not be perfect. Might not? Probably not. We're probably not perfect. <laughs> we are not perfect. But if our intent is to preach Christ and Him crucified, we should rejoice. We should rejoice. Let's be careful to make sure that we are focused on the good that is happening, right? Paul is looking at this, I am an, in prison. I am removed from all of my family, all of my church family, all of everything that I know. And yet, here I am continuing to do what God has called me to do, to continue to encourage the churches. Let's think about that. In this day and age, through COVID, right, haven't we felt like we struggled because we felt like our hands are tied? There's so much that we can't do. I've done it myself. I focused on what I can. I'm not able to do that because of this. I'm not able to do that. I'm not able to be there. I'm not able to be in person. We're not able to do what we'd like to do. We can't hug. That actually does make me really sad. But what can we do? Rejoice. Preach the word. Preach the word. He goes on to say in the second half of 18, Yes, and I will rejoice. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. As it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage, now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. I'm going to read that again. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you. Ah, 
for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And then he goes on to say that he has fruitful labor. When we think about this image over here, do we think that just sitting and writing letters is fruitful labor? So much we think that there has to be a greater purpose, a greater call. I want to make a greater impact. Do you think that this man writing the letters to the church would have ever imagined what God would have done through his life? Like he says, pour it out like a drink offering. He sacrificed everything for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of those that he poured his life into, this group in um, Philippi. He probably would have never imagined that today, <laughs> February 14th, 2021, probably couldn't even conceptualize 2,000 years later, we are reading the words that he penned, and they have the power to transform our lives. To live is Christ, and to die is gain. That is an amazing statement. In Paul's eyes, it's a win-win, even in prison. To live in prison is Christ. To live like this in chains. I want to take a moment and just appreciate what's going on here. Paul's in prison. He knows not when or even if he's going to be released. And does this stop him? Do his circumstances change his mission and call? No. <laughs> Rather, it advances the gospel. <laughs> How often do we ask God to change our circumstances if they are unpleasant? While all the while, God's trying to advance the gospel through our negative circumstances. Rather, our prayers should be, Lord, change me in these circumstances and not change our circumstances. We have much to give even if everything is against us. Lord, use us. Lord, use us. Do we hear the call of the Holy Spirit? God calling us, like Paul, to a people as yet unknown. Forgoing, like Paul, his detailed plans to travel, but instead going over to Macedonia. How powerfully God moved through that obedience. Martin Luther King wrote this, I am in Birmingham because injustice is here. Just as the prophets of the 8th century B.C. left their villages and carried their, thus saith the Lord, far beyond the boundaries of their hometowns, and just as the Apostle Paul left his village of Tarsus and carried the gospel of Jesus Christ to the far corners of the Greco-Roman world, so am I compelled to carry the gospel of freedom beyond my own hometown. Like Paul, I must constantly respond to the Macedonian call for aid. Martin Luther King drew this analogy that as we continue to respond in obedience to God's call, that we are responding to those that are desperate for the gospel. The Macedonians had never heard, and there was a call, this call that went to the Holy Spirit, this vision that was given. And in the same way, God is calling us to a people probably as yet unknown to us, as different to us as the Macedonians were to Paul. His hands are changed, but the sword is still powerful. It can move, it can swing, it can conquer the darkness. We always have the word. Regardless of our circumstances, we are called to preach the word, to carry the gospel, to advance the gospel to people as yet unknown to us. You might say, I'm too young. You have the word. Every one of you kids in here that's not in kids church, you are never too young. I'm too old. Come on now. You have the word. I'm broke. You have the word of greater value than anything that money can buy. Cars we own, the houses we live in, the toys that we have do not have the power to transform a life the way that the Word of God does. 
far more valuable than anything that money can buy. Yeah. And maybe you're wealthy. Well, don't let that lead you astray. You have the word. Ooh, and you have the means to get it out there. <laughs> so come on, we don't have an excuse, right? Paul was in prison, grateful for the advancement of the gospel, even in those circumstances. So I would say today, I would call us to look anew, look with new eyes on our own circumstances and yield them into the hands of the one that can perform miracles. Like we said earlier, he is the way maker. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you, O Lord, for this precious letter written so long ago by a man who was able to see the beauty in his circumstances, even in prison. And so God, allow us, O Lord, to set aside our feelings about our circumstances, God, but to trust you in them, whether they are uh, pleasant to us or unpleasant, God, that you are using them to advance the gospel if we would just have the eyes. So God, today I pray, Lord, that each and every one in this place and in the sound of my voice joining us from wherever they are would see, God, that you are in and through each and every circumstance in their life, that you have never left them, you don't forsake them, that you are leading them, oh God. Strengthen us in the difficult circumstances. God, may we receive the understanding today that your word is precious and that, God, it is a gift that you've given us, but not for us alone, but for us to share. The beauty of the love of God poured out in Jesus Christ is our call to share the good news. So, God, help us, strengthen us, so, oh God, may we surrender our circumstances into your use and your plans. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Now may you be filled with all of God's fullness. <laughs> and may you have the mind and the heart of Christ. May you be consistent in your commitment when you feel in touch and when you feel out of touch. Walk by faith and not by feeling. Resting on his promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Praise God and let God's peace dwell with you today and always. Amen.